welcome friends to another session on problem solving and uh, this is again related to lines and angles and i'm happy to present one problem here which has got some practical relevance and you see there's a this is a problem in physics actually and you might have studied light and reflection of light so you see how we use the concepts of lines and angles in solving problems related to physics so the question is something like this there are two plane mirrors pq and rs okay they are placed parallel to each other and there's an incident ray ab which is striking the mirror pq at point b and is re getting reflected as ray bc now ray bc goes and strikes the mirror rs and gets reflected as cd we have to prove that ab is parallel to cd the incident ray is parallel to uh, you know so for the incident ab ray is parallel to cd which is a double reflected ray now if you imagine let's say if this portion of the mirror was not there so that in that case what would happen this ray would have gone straight isn't it so if you see you had a torch let's say here in this case you had some torch and you 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 know switch it on so in hence you can actually shift the beam by this particular mechanism isn't it and the beam beam would be parallel to the initial beam only so hence initially if the, uh, there were no mirror there was no mirror let's say then the rays would have flown like that or gone like that right but using this mechanism you actually laterally shifted the beam so hence you can displace the beam by this mechanism so this is very very useful in various applications okay now how to prove the given thing so how to go about the proof now if you have learned physics and reflection of light you know that angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection right this is what we have studied in physics so let's say this angle is i and this angle is r then i is equal to r and again let's say this angle is i1 and this angle is r1 so i1 is also equal to r1 now if you see these two lines are perpendicular so uh, let me name it let me name this is this is nothing but the normal right so angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection and uh, you know we know the uh, nomenclature so this let's say this is b n1 and this is c n2 so b n1 is a normal b n1 is normal normal to p q and what is a normal guys normal makes an angle of 90 degree with the surface so this is 90 degrees and similarly so hence we can write b n1 is perpendicular to p q similarly you can say c n2 is perpendicular to r s so n1 and n2 are two points don't get don't don't get confused so two points named as n1 and n2 okay so c n2 is parallel to or oh, sorry perpendicular to r s so that means b n1 is parallel to c n2 so this means b n1 is parallel to c n2 isn't it that means what angle r is equal to i1 see if these two lines are parallel then i1 must be equal to r right and this is because of alternate interior angles okay so r is equal to i1 and we know that from 1 and 2 if you see 1 and 2 so i is equal to r and i1 is equal to r1 so hence you can also say if you replace r by i and i1 by r1 both will be same because r is equal to i and i1 is equal to r1 so hence this is also true so if you see so these are the two new equations so let's say this equation was 3 and this was 4 so add 3 and 4 adding 3 and 4 we will get r plus i in the left hand side will be equal to i1 plus r1 in the right hand side now let us understand what is i1 and r1 if you see here 
I and R is nothing but I plus R. Can I write this as angle A B C is equal to angle B C D. I1 plus R1 is B C D. So hence angle A B C is equal to B C D. Right? So if I have to uh, you know denote them, so this angle is equal to is, is equal to this angle. And if you see this is nothing but AB and CD are two lines and BC is a transversal and they look like they are alternate interior angles. So hence you can say AB is parallel to CD. Why? Because alternate interior angles are equal. Okay, which two inter alternate interior angles? So basically ABC, this one, is equal to BCD, this one. Right? So hence we could prove that AB is parallel to CD. So hence after double reflection the rays become parallel. Right. So this was the first reflection and this was this was the first reflection and this is the second reflection. Two reflections are happening and after the second reflection then the ray which is emerging out is parallel to the incident ray. That's what we learn and it has got a lot of practical and physical significance in physics.